Hi guys, welcome back to Jeanette and Her Puzzles. I know it's been a while, but I wasn't feeling well. There's a lot happening at the moment, but I think that's also a reason why I'm doing the video I'm doing today, because when I'm not feeling well, I normally puzzle a lot. <laughs> and I've already completed 21 puzzles this year, and we are only in March now. <laughs> and last year I've done 44 in the entire year. So I was thinking to doing these rating by difficulty videos once every six months, but it seems like I'm gonna have to do them more often because there's just so many puzzles that I just cannot wait six months to do one video. As normally, I'm gonna start with the easy pile, then move to the medium and the hard one. And obviously all puzzles are not here because I already exchanged some. So let's just start with the first puzzle now. It's a 326 piece puzzle by Woodbest and the title of this one is Contrasting Color Challenge. I've done this puzzle quite recently and I actually thought it's gonna be really difficult because it only has two shapes, but when I actually started to put it together, like the initial beginning was difficult because I didn't even know where to begin. The most difficult part was this orange section because there was not that much detail on it, but everything else was quite easy and I kinda wish I got it in a larger size. Up next is 631 pieces by Ravensburger and the title of this one is Crib Gradient. This is also one of the puzzles that I've done quite recently and it's also a new purchase so because I'm trying new gradient puzzles and this was the only thing I could get as close to like playing gradient and it was really interesting because I thought it's going to be quite difficult because it's got different types of pieces. It took me 1 hour 45 to finish the puzzle, which I think is a really good time for the piece count. And I actually really enjoyed it, like, it kind of made me look forward to the pink crib puzzle, but I know that obviously that one's just one colour, so it's definitely not gonna be as easy as this one, but, you know, at least I'm not that scared of it anymore, I guess. Up next is a 500 piece puzzle by Ravensburger, and the title of this one is Cute Dogs in the Garden. So you probably know this puzzle from the first battle of the YouTube puzzlers, and I must say that I really enjoyed it, even though it was nerve-wracking, <laughs> but I think it's got still quite enough specific sections that it's quite easy to separate the puzzle. And I would definitely say if I wasn't doing it as speed puzzling, it would probably be even more enjoyable or like easier to say, like because there wouldn't be like the stress factor <laughs> involved with doing this puzzle. The next one is 500 piece puzzle by Clementoni, and the title of this one is Penguins. So this was my first ever speed puzzling experience, like ever. And I've done it in preparation for the bot tip. And it was kind of okay, like the sections were quite specific. There was like a little bit confusion in the mid section because some pieces I wasn't completely sure if they were like a part of the sky or the sea. But other than that, it was quite enjoyable to put together. I would definitely say that it helps that it's Clementoni because they've got very specific shapes. So it definitely helped with the blue section. The next one is 368 pieces by Ravensburger and the title of this one is Desolated City. You probably find it a bit weird that this puzzle is where it is because it's got lower piece count, but it's quite dark and also there's not that many colours. It definitely took me longer than the Penguins one and the pieces are quite large as well. So it ends up being the size of a thousand piece puzzle. If you've done exit puzzles before, then you know how it is, but I always struggle with the frame. And my sister helps me because I, I literally put the frame together wrong for this puzzle. That's also why I find it a little bit more difficult. Up next is 368 pieces by Ravensburger and the title of this one is Magical Mayhem. So another exit puzzle, so this one basically is like the same concept as the last one. But what makes it a bit more difficult with this one is it's basically just like one colour. Like it's not really one colour, but it's like all the elements can be anywhere in the puzzle because it's like the same patterns repeat across the puzzle and that's what makes it more difficult. Up next is a 500 piece puzzle by Clementoni and the title of this one is Braised Lake. I don't have this puzzle with me anymore, but I remember it was a really easy puzzle, I assembled it in one afternoon. I regret not doing it as speed puzzling, but at the time I didn't think I'm gonna need to practice, so I just put it together in a normal way, which I do regret right now, <laughs> but you know, things happen. The next one is a 500 piece puzzle by Prime 3D and the title of this one is just Harry Potter. As I mentioned so many times before, Wizarding World doesn't seem to have titles for some reason and I don't understand that reason. What makes this puzzle more difficult is basically the fact that it is 3D because it does change the picture a little bit when you're trying to put it together and that doesn't help. <laughs> 
The next one is 759 piece puzzle by Ravensburger and the title of this one is The Forbidden Basement. Another exit puzzle with a bit of a higher number of pieces. Still an easy assembly, but because it is an exit puzzle, you know, there's quite a lot of complications with the frame, so that did not help. And the last puzzle in the easy pile is a thousand piece puzzle by Paladon and the title of this one is Friends. So the quality of this puzzle wasn't great, but the assembly, however, was very simple. For some reason, I started off with a black title in the middle, which definitely made it complicated more than it had to be. But like everything that was like in the purple, it was so easy to put together. It was probably like similar to the gradient puzzle level, like of difficulty. You can say obviously it was a higher piece count, but still a really enjoyable assembly. And now moving on to the medium pile, and the first puzzle of this pile is the 500 piece puzzle by Ravensburger, and the title of this one is Ingenious Eyes. I normally don't find any 500 piece puzzles difficult, but this one was definitely, you know, next level. You know, I used this puzzle like to calm my nerves the day before I was filming Battle of the YouTube Puzzlers, and it definitely made me worse, like I think I completely lost my puzzle mojo after doing this puzzle. The fact that there's basically just three sections to this puzzle, which is, you know, fine, but there's basically just like dark blue and fur and oh my god fur is difficult you know like it's never been easy but this is like taking 50% of the puzzle. So what made it more difficult with this puzzle is it was quite damaged. Basically some pieces were like bent over, some were glued together really poorly. There were some pieces that were basically still stuck together. So yeah it definitely did not help. So I kind of like hate this puzzle. <laughs> No, not hate it, but yeah, definitely not one of my favorites. Up next is a thousand piece puzzle by Talking Tables and the title of this one is Festival Puzzle. I got this puzzle in an exchange as well and I really wanted it because it says it includes 20 trivia questions and there was none inside. <laughs> so I was really disappointed about that because I wanted to make a video out of it and you know, go through the questions with you guys, but there's literally nothing in the box beside the puzzle. The assembly itself, it was really easy and enjoyable. So one of the puzzles that just had so many specific, you know, colors and shapes that it was quite easy to put together. Up next is a thousand piece puzzle by Clementoni and the title of this one is 3D Dolphin Riff. Feels forever ago since I've done that puzzle, but I remember it was really easy. Just that, you know, the C-section was a bit more difficult and with the little fish, they weren't that distinguished. But everything that was like part of the coral reef and the like, the dolphin and all the big fish, they're really standing out and that made the puzzle quite easy to put together. And I absolutely love the 3D effect, but I should have kept the glasses. I already exchanged that puzzle, so no more glasses for me. <laughs> Next one on the medium pile is the thousand piece puzzle by Schmidt and the title of this one is Aladdin. You might remember this puzzle, I got it from my sister when reaching 1000 subscribers. So it was a really enjoyable puzzle, put it together without knowing the picture and it was still so simple. Schmidt puzzle is a really good quality and it was really easy to like know which pieces fit together. I think the most complicated part of this one was basically the grass section because there was like so many same colors they keep repeating themselves but overall oh my god i love this puzzle <laughs> yeah so there's gonna be a disney collection video coming soon because after doing this puzzle me and my sister went on a shopping spree so keep an eye out up next is a thousand piece puzzle by ravensburger and the title of this one is start living your dream this puzzle was so enjoyable to put together. It's got so many specific colors and sections that it was really easy to find those pieces. One thing that made it a bit more difficult is basically the gray background. So obviously after I've done everything and there was just the only pieces left, it took a while to put them in. But I found three signed pieces in this puzzle, which like I never even thought to check the puzzle from the back for like the signed pieces. But with this one, when I was doing the sorting, I found one signed piece. So once I was done with the puzzle, I basically flipped it and I was like, oh my God, there's literally four signed pieces. Obviously one was mine. This is so exciting because I love seeing history in a puzzle and it just made my day. So I think I'm gonna like flip every puzzle from now on because I need to see if there's got like any signed pieces. The next puzzle on my list is a thousand piece puzzle by Ravensburger and the title of this one is Times Square, Everyone Should Go There. I recently exchanged this puzzle and I really liked it. I basically exchanged it the next day after I finished it 
because the lady was like all over it she was like i want it and uh it was a really enjoyable puzzle i was a little bit scared of it at first because it's quite chaotic but really when it comes down to it, it's like any piece you pick up you can just check the box and you know exactly where it's gonna go because it's so specific like there's a lot happening you wouldn't be able I don't think to solve the puzzle without seeing the picture because you, you don't know literally like what the next piece is gonna be because it's so different but in a way it's quite enjoyable to sometimes do the puzzle where you can't even do the sorting or like you know go from just looking at the pieces you just literally have to use the box to solve the puzzle which I'm completely fine with because then at least I know that I'm gonna be able to finish the puzzle <laughs> because sometimes when you don't when you can't help yourself with the picture you just it can take a while, <laughs> you know, you'll see when we get to the hard pile. <laughs> the next one is a thousand piece puzzle by Ravensburger and the title of this one is Mediterranean food. I wouldn't say that this puzzle is particularly difficult but what makes it worse for me is the fact that it's portrait because I do most of my puzzles like in free time downstairs on the sofa and when I put it on my puzzle board it's just so hard to like reach the top sections like anything that's above there like the top third of the puzzle, I think it's quite difficult for me to reach. So I need to keep putting it on the side and then I just find it a bit like, I don't know. It messes with my brain when I do it sideways because I think it's just the picture is not turned in the right direction. And also there was quite a lot of like blank white pieces, so that didn't help. The next one is 1500 piece puzzle by Ravensburger and the title of this one is Cottage in England. So even though it's a high account number, it was actually a really easy assembly because Ravensburger's got specific shaped pieces and there was literally so many specific sections like colour sections and texture sections so that helped so much. And I actually remember I finished that one on New Year's Eve. I know it's insane but I think I finished it like at 9 or 10pm just before going out so. So that was the last puzzle of 2022, literally like <laughs> by two hours. The next one is a thousand piece puzzle by Clementoni and the title of this one is Paquette Bay. This puzzle was actually easier than I expected it to be because there's got like so many specific colors but they're like throughout the entire puzzle so I thought it's going to be really difficult to find where it fits but because the puzzle is done in such a large scale it was actually so easy when seeing all the details because the water, like the texture of the water, you could see just by the texture of it where it fits. So that definitely helped. What I didn't like about this puzzle is the fact that it's panoramic, which I know I complained about that before, but because it doesn't fit on my puzzle board and I do my puzzles on my puzzle board because then I can, you know, put them away. And there's just something that makes it a bit more difficult for me or maybe I should say more annoying because then you know I try to do the puzzle as quick as possible because there's always one section of the puzzle just like lying around because I cannot fit in the puzzle board. Up next is a thousand piece puzzle by Ravensburger and the title of this one is Nuremberg Reflections. So this is the puzzle that was the opposite of the last one so I thought it's gonna be easier and it was actually more difficult. Normally when you have like water in the puzzle it normally splits the puzzle in half because then you know what's the bottom section and what's the top section and that should make it easier but with this puzzle like the blue sky was there was a lot of it, like a lot, and there wasn't that much specific like gradient in it. So it was definitely more difficult in that section. So yeah, that's why it is where it is. And the last puzzle of the medium pile is a thousand piece puzzle by Clementoni and the title of this one is Four Seasons. I love Clementoni puzzles, don't get me wrong, but that puzzle was, I think, quite old and the specific pieces like the specific shaped pieces that Clementoni has it wasn't that specific with that puzzle because the sky was literally like I was putting it together with my brother-in-law and both of us were working on the sky and he's done a few pieces and I've done a few pieces and then we realized they was actually put together wrongly <laughs> because the next pieces wouldn't fit in there was misfits and that is never a good thing with a puzzle but I know that Clementoni has really good quality now so I'm not gonna judge the brand based on this puzzle that looks like it's from the 90s <laughs> so you know but that definitely made the assembly more difficult. Moving on to the hard pile now and I'm actually missing more than half of the puzzle that's why the pile is so small <laughs> but let's just start with the first one it's a thousand piece puzzle by Ravensburger and the title of this one is Woodland Day. 
this puzzle was definitely more difficult than I thought it's gonna be because I knew it's got missing pieces. I was told one, but it could be more. So there's definitely something that when you're putting the puzzle together and then you cannot find one piece and you're like, oh, maybe that's the missing one. And then you just, you know, keep thinking that every time you get stuck, oh, that might be the missing piece. And then you move on instead of just keep looking for that piece. But also because it was painted, it made it a lot more difficult because there's not like clear lines or anything. It was just like, everything's kind of like mushed together in like similar colors all across the puzzle so yeah i did not enjoy that puzzle i'm not gonna lie up next is a thousand piece puzzle by schmidt and the title of this one is fairy tale magic it's been quite a while since i've done that puzzle and i remember that it took me quite a long time because i had it in my puzzle board and it was quite difficult to like build it because there were so many different colors that went throughout the entire puzzle so basically if I left this puzzle out for a few days I think it could end up on the medium pile but the fact that I had to basically put it away and any loose pieces had to be like taken out of the puzzle board otherwise they just slide down when I put it sideways so that definitely made it more difficult because when I found the piece that you know goes somewhere and then I couldn't find any other piece that fits with it I basically had to put it back <laughs> when I finished puzzling for the day so that was something that definitely made it more difficult to me. Next one is a 1500 piece puzzle by Clementoni and the title of this one is Mirage. Such a beautiful puzzle but unfortunately had three missing pieces. It was quite easy to do the assembly and like the sorting and stuff. The most difficult part was I think like the water section at the bottom because it was quite dark. You basically had to assemble the section off of the shape of the pieces, not on, you know, the picture. And also halfway through the puzzle I noticed that there's like pieces missing, which also didn't help because then I was like, oh, is there another piece missing? Sorry, I don't know if that's just me, but if I know that there could be a piece missing, it makes it so much more difficult for me to assemble the puzzle because like I said it happens with puzzles a lot like you're looking for one piece you know exactly the shape and you just cannot find the right piece and then when you have a puzzle from a charity shop or like exchange puzzle you just keep thinking like okay maybe it's not complete what if this piece is actually missing I cannot find it you know so it could be a bit of like a higher difficulty level up next is 919 piece puzzle by Ravensburger and the title of this one is Exit the Circle Paris. So this is one of the new puzzles that me and my sister like put together and it's a twist on the normal exit puzzle. And the reason why it is in the hard pile is not actually because the picture is difficult. No, I don't want to spoil too much for anyone who hasn't done exit puzzles before but basically with the normal exit puzzle you get solution from the edge pieces. And with this one, you get the solution from the inside pieces. So imagine that where it's not that the frame is difficult, it's like you get to the inside and there are gonna be pieces that can fit in multiple sections. We don't take too much. <laughs> so it's quite difficult. It was definitely like exhausting to put this puzzle together to say the least. Like the inside section was easy, but the outside was just like a complete nightmare. The next one is a thousand piece puzzle by Clementoni and the title of this one is Mona Daisy. I was actually really looking forward to putting this puzzle together but it was not easy at all. Like there was a section that I had to wait for the daylight to finish it, so the bottom section. I couldn't do it at night because you need sunlight. Sunlight shows a lot more difference in the color so I had it in my puzzle board for like a week or so and yeah I just had to I needed daylight for it. And also, like I said, Clement only has really specific shapes. But again, this is quite an old puzzle and it wasn't that specific here. <laughs> so it was really difficult. Up next is a 1008 piece puzzle by Prime 3D and the title of this one is Northern Gannet's Best Rock Scotland. This puzzle box played a little bit of a trick on me because honestly, I've done quite a few puzzles from Day to Night collection and I know how difficult they are when the you know, the day to night goes from the bottom to the top. And with this one, I was like, oh my God, he's got quite a lot of color. It's really bright. This section is the night section and it's gonna be completely fine. But what I didn't realize is basically that this is a panoramic puzzle. So I basically flip the box. And oh my God, <laughs> it's just like, I basically could see, I think this section from the front of the box. So this is basically all dark and this is basically all dark and when I was putting the puzzle together I 
yeah, I'm not even gonna, you know, it's just insanity. It was really difficult, obviously, you can see where it is really far. <laughs> Almost at the end of the video, so when I got to the dark section, I basically had to like just, you know, shape sold the pieces. And I said, I'm gonna do that during the day. And I'm gonna, you know, put all of the pieces out and do it in the daylight. And I've done it yesterday, actually. I finished it yesterday. And I put it out at like 10 a.m. And it decided to be cloudy all day yesterday. So like today I've got sun out, but yesterday when I was doing the puzzle, no. <laughs> no daylight for me. So I basically used like my phone's torch to, you know, see a little bit of a difference in the texture. So this was definitely a difficult puzzle to say the least. The next puzzle I'm gonna show you, I'm sure that some of you already know because there's been quite a few videos about it, but it's basically a thousand piece puzzle by Fools Entertainment and the title of this one is Puzzle Puzzle. And yeah, you're seeing right, the puzzle is not with me. And I actually found the girl that I've done a few exchanges with before and she wanted it. And I'm like, you have no idea what you're getting yourself into, but I'm happy to give it away. <laughs> that puzzle was 19 hours roughly i don't know exactly because i didn't put the times down at that point yet oh that's not even the worst part it's like the quality of the puzzle was really good that's why i didn't give up on it but it's just the picture the picture was insane and the worst part about it is that i got myself puzzle puzzle too <laughs> so the guy who designed the puzzles and saw all of the videos about Puzzle Puzzle, he said if he can send me another one and he sent me Puzzle Puzzle too. Well, at least I know what I'm getting myself into this time, but oh my god, that's gonna be fun. <laughs> Let's just say that. The good thing about it is like, I know I'm not gonna be able to finish it in one day, so when I'm gonna be doing it, I'm literally gonna, you know, set everything up. So I don't need to move or like put it on my bed. I'm not going to be doing it on my bed because that's just, I need to put it away every day. So I'm definitely going to do a setup when I can just leave it out for like five days and just, you know, keep working on it. But if you want to see the struggles ahead with my puzzle puzzle, just watch this video up next. Bye.